Friday night, December 21st, 2018, the solstice, that's right, the winter solstice, this is the shortest day of the year, and this is the X-Mass show, the Christmas show for the Freakers Ball that we do every year, so we're bound to have a good time, we always have a good time on this, I think we'll have another one, because, uh, yeah, yeah, that's what we do, anyway, <laughs> welcome everybody out there tuned in. Uh, tonight, whether you're here in the Real Liberty Media chat room, where you, where you ought to be, on reallibertymedia.com or irc.freenode.net in the pound town Real Liberty Media, or whether you're in one of the many other places the audio stream goes out to, and there's a lot of places the audio stream goes out to, which, if you're listening, you already know, but if you're not, well, wait, if you're hearing this on podcast replay later on, <laughs> you can catch us on rlmradio.xyz. You can catch us on Tuned In or on Internet Radio or on freedomsnetwork.com or on realliberty.org or, well, other places. We're all, all over the place, and then we're more places after the show. That's right. We wind up on Spreaker. We wind up on YouTube. We wind up on BitChute. And we wind up on iHeartRadio. <laughs> hey, Ms. Booth. Miss Bose? Hey, I'm here. Oh, okay. <laughs> Howdy, That's how you doing? Well. Are you, can you hear me? Yeah, what's up? What did you say? He said, <laughs> how are you doing? Oh, I'm fine. I didn't hear that part. Oh, okay. Yeah. Shut out. Oh, all right. Well, I'm, I'm still here. All right. All right. I'm fine. Good, 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 good. Yep, I'm doing well. Right on. So, yeah, just trying to keep this dog entertained. Yeah? How, how is he? Yeah, he's he's busy. <laughs> does, does he's he getting pretty good at he 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 can go up and down the upstairs, the upstairs now, does, and down. Does he, require, and down does he require a lot of entertainment? Uh, well, when he's, when he's excited and wound up and everything, yeah, but he he does settle down a little bit. So he's not too, he's not too wild. All right. For uh, anybody listening, if you don't know, uh, Moose Girl got a new dog this week, a little Bra yep. Jack Russell Terrier named Jackson. Yep. Action Jackson. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and he's, what, uh, six weeks, 12 weeks? No, he's 15 weeks. 15 weeks. Yep. Yep. So, well, three months. He went to the vet today. He's fine. He only got one vaccine so far today. I got to take him back in a couple weeks. So, yeah. Um, yeah, he's good. He's doing really good. That, that's that's terrific. Yeah, he's a pretty smart dog. So I'm pretty happy about him. That's good. That's good. You needed a kid, a new kid. Oh yeah, that's just what I needed. <laughs> <laughs> No, he's great. He's awesome. Uh, that's good. Uh, well, I mean, you, you, you sound like you're happy to have him. And, and, yep, typical Jack Russell dog. Yeah. <laughs> so, but he, uh, I'm going to be taking him to training here starting on January 17th for seven weeks. Okay. Once a week. O yeah. Obedience, obedience training. Yeah, it's it, you start with puppy training, then they have other ones you can graduate to. So it'll just be good because he needs to know that I am the boss, not him. <laughs> well, yeah, well, you just have to be the boss. That's pretty easy. To do. Right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You're you're the alpha. He'll be fine. He'll he'll get it. He'll he's he's a smart bud. I'm sure he is. I'm sure he is. So yeah, that's about it. That's good. That's good. So you got all your uh, whatever holiday shopping, blah blah blah. blah. No, I'm not done. No. So you're doing some. I'm, well, I'm doing some, but not a lot. I mean, I don't have to do a lot of shopping because the kids are 18. Right. And yeah, I had to throw the ball for the freaking dog. He's 
Okay. So, yeah, they just want money. I mean, I'm going to buy them some clothes just because they're poor college kids and <laughs> they need poor Matt's wearing flood pants. Like, really, they just, dude? I don't care. They yeah, just well, want money. What? <laughs> they just want money. Yeah, I know. <laughs> But if uh, I don't buy kid clothes for that kid, he's not going to buy his own fucking clothes. Well, eventually he will. Yeah, he will eventually, but... Uh, just take him, down oh. to the, take him down to the thrift store. What? Just take him down to the thrift store down there. Well, yeah. Yeah. So show, show, show him how to buy his $5 pants or whatever. What was that? So show him how to buy his $5 pants. Yeah. Well, they should know that because, like, I yeah, they're poor. I've been going to thrift stores and what have you since they've been born. So. <laughs> All right. So cool. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah. So I mean, I what the Chris? We don't even have a tree up. Like the week after Thanksgiving, I said to Matt, I go, "Are you going to put trees or lights on the outside of the house?" He's like, "Yeah, I'll do that." Well, he didn't do it. And then it was like, what, two weeks ago? I'm like, well, forget it now. Yeah, what's the point? It's too late now. It's like, it can't, I'm not going to put him up for one friggin' day, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so I, I anyway, go I got, I didn't put the tree up this year. It's like, whatever. No one seemed to, seemed to care, so. Yeah, whatever. Screw it. I really need it. You know, it's... <laughs> It's just a pain in the ass, so. Well, I get I that. I feel real, real, it, like I'm really in the holiday spirit, don't I? Well, uh, uh, whatever. A tree doesn't make anything. That's just a. A tree? Yeah, no. Yeah, whatever, man. It don't mean, don't mean nothing. <laughs> right. Uh, that's only, you know, if you got little kids and they, you know, whatever. But you, know, you don't yeah. have little kids, and so. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't decorate. I don't do nothing. It's just kind of like, why? You know, I mean, a lot of people get really into it, and I, I'm fine with it. If you're really into it, great, you know, have at it. But I'm just not that into it, you know? I know. I know you're not. I, 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 I'm certainly not, so there we go. Anyway, <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, you go ahead. So I got to go see what he's doing. I don't know what he's doing. I can't see him right now. Uh, okay. He's messing around with something. I don't know what he's doing. <laughs> he's fine, I think, but he's he's pawing at his kennel or something, trying to get something. Now he's whining. Uh, okay. I better go see what's going on. All right, I'll just start playing some music then. All right, do that. <laughs> and it's the Christmas show, so it should be good. And uh, thanks for tuning in, everyone. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So uh, let's kick it off here. <laughs> oh, this is going to be a funny show. I'm, I, I'm, I'm thinking this is going to be a funny show. Anyway, uh, everybody sing along now, I guess. Sing along. You know. All right, little Joe, Bonham, Joe Bonamassa there doing Bring Back My Cadillac at one of his Christmas videos. Uh, before that, we had George Thorogood and the Destroyers with Rock and Roll Christmas. And we kicked it off with a, uh, a dual version of Baby It's Cold Outside. Uh, one with the uh, man being the aggressor and the other with the woman. <laughs> All right. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. They're still playing that song here on the Christmas station, Paul. No, <laughs> actually, the, uh, the original radio station had decided uh, that that was not good. Um went ahead and and buckled under the pressure. Oh, good. Yeah, so. I mean, it, it's just, you can, you can take something too far. It, it's ridiculous. Oh, absolutely. No no question about it. No question about it. I mean, it, it just gets taken too far, and then the whole, it just gets all convoluted, and it's like, really? Ah, yeah, it's all messed up. Yeah. So, um... Found this uh, this week. It's from December seventeenth, and it's a video. But I'm not gonna. We're not gonna play the video. Um, just 
and I have yet to watch this whole thing. Anyway, I'm going to post it in the chat here, the link. It is about 5G. Oh, okay. So anyway, in the video below the video, um, Dr. Sharon Goldberg, an internal medicine physician, formal medical school assistant professor, and academic with more than two decades in the field, gives her testimony regarding electromagnetic radiation, 5G technology, and makes it clear that these topics should consume more of our leaders' thoughts. Uh, Industry-sponsored 5G wireless infrastructure legislation recently passed through the Michigan Health Energy Policy Committee with a vote of 15 to 4. Anyway, um, and concerns. We should, our leaders should be, this, this testimony should be on their thoughts is what this is saying. Anyway, she says that wireless radiation has biological effects, period. There is no longer a subject for debate when you look at PubMed and, and the peer review literature. These effects are seen in all forms, like plants, animals, insects, microbes. In humans, we have, a, we have clear evidence of cancer now. There is no question. We have evidence of DNA drain damage, cardiomyopathy, which is the precursor of congestive heart failure, neuropsychiatric effects. 5G is an untested application of a technology that we know is harmful. We know it from the science. In academics, this is called human subject research. Interesting. So there you have it. Yeah, no, that's, that's very interesting. So, I I don't care about 5G. I mean, I don't care. I could care, couldn't care less if we get it or not. Right. And this oh. is the reason. This is the friggin' reason right here. Exactly. It's not good for you. It's not good. It says it right there. It's not good for plants, animals, insects, microbes. So there's right. that video. It, let's see how long it is. It's 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 just under 15 minutes long, so it's not a long video at all. Yeah. <clears throat> so. So there you go. I know that's not a Christmas related thing, Graham, but. All right. Well, this is um, it's a bookmark. Well, so. <laughs> uh, well, th this is not necessarily Christmas, but it's solstice. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, which is today, today's solstice. Right. It's the shortest day of the year. And so, uh, from Forbes, believe it or not, Forbes.com, uh, winter solstice 2018 coincides with both a full moon and a meteor shower. Cool. So, I saw an article on that earlier. Yeah, it says winter solstice falling on December 21st, 2018 today will mark the shortest day of the year, as well as a full moon in the night sky, which I actually think is tomorrow, but that's all right. Um, uh, the, the <laughs> <upco> <laughs> yes, yeah, tomorrow it's uh, my calendar. Yeah, the upcoming full moon, named Cold Moon, or the Long Night Moon, will be visible during the longest night of the year. The two events don't perfectly align. The peak full moon will occur tomorrow at 12.49 p.m. Eastern Standard Time while the winter solstice falls a day earlier on December 21st. However, to the typical person viewing the moon, it will appear full for several days. Uh, the winter solstice marks a transition period uh, where, where days begin getting longer in the nor northern hemisphere and shorter in the southern hemisphere. The evening of the winter solstice will be the longest of the year for the northern hemisphere. This is because the Earth's poles create a maximum tilt away from the sun in the northern hemisphere and the maximum tilt towards the sun in the southern hemisphere. So uh, there's some nice, cool photos here that you guys can check out about that, cool. showing the tilt of the sun. Da -da 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 -da. And, and also, it's uh, Yule Day, Yuletide Day, uh, for those of you that uh, are unaware. All right, um, mm -hmm. It's all the moonrise before the sun went down. Impressive, impressive. All right. Uh, so good. Uh, anyway, there we go. It's uh, see. All, on the, also today, you'll be able to see Mercury and Jupiter in conjunction in the long night sky. On top of all that, the Ursid meteor shower peaks tonight and tomorrow, adding shooting stars to the mix. So everything's gonna be. That should be cool. Yeah, you're gonna have you know you're gonna have you're gonna have Mercury and Jupiter up there lighting stuff up, and you're gonna have the the full moon, and, and then you're going to have the uh, the shooting, the, the, the ursids. So, uh, yeah, all kinds of cool, fun stuff going on up there in the skies. 
if yeah. if you like the skies, like look it up there. You know, it's uh, it's great stuff. So check yeah. her, check her out. You know, it's, uh, yeah. I live in Wisconsin, but it's actually been really mild. It's actually down on normal temps today. Like for five days straight, it was above thirty two. It was like right. in the forties. So it was like muddy and icky as hell. It's like I'm kind of glad that it's colder now because. If it's going to be winter, it might as well be winter and not just in between, you know? Yeah. So, anyway, since you were uh, already talking about the uh, five yeah. gear, um, I, yeah. I, I had a story already lined up on that for you all. Oh, cool. From medicinetoday.net. 5G, the most censored story of 2018. Yeah, I would say. Yeah, really. They don't want you to know. They want you to think it's just fine for you. Yeah, really. Oh, no problems here. Just adapt to this new technology, no problem. Yeah, it's it's like, uh, no, there. I have a problem with yeah. it. All right, so it says, uh, yeah. Re Researcher exposes health dangers to the city council. So uh, recently an incredible article was published about what they called the most censored story of 2018. 5G internet and the true health consequences that could, that will arise from the decision for the networks to offer internet and phone service at much higher frequencies than the standard 2.45 gigahertz uh, that we currently operate our electronics on. Uh, on October 1st, uh, Verizon decided to launch the first real 5G internet in the world, setting it up in four American cities, Houston, Sacramento, Indianapolis, and L.A. Oh, geez. Uh, what the mainstream media didn't mention in its fairly scarce coverage of the issue are the potential health consequences that can arise out of being inundated with much higher frequencies than the current Wi-Fi in the millimeter wave band. Smaller cells emitting higher frequencies closer to your heads uh, were installed in those four cities with dozens of other American cities set to receive 5G from other corporations like AT&T in the next year. So Yeah, it, Fox. Yeah, hopefully that doesn't happen, but, it, you know. Yeah. It, <laughs> yeah. yeah. It, it, it's probably happening without you even knowing it. It's just like it said in that the article I read from, it could, but, you know. But, but speaking of that, DNA. but speaking of that, Internet, as it is, is already linked to infertility and a host of other right. problems, uh, with some people being more sensitive to it and some being less sensitive. It currently runs on a frequency of 2.45 gigahertz, but here's the crazy thing. 2.45 gigahertz is like a standard frequency that all kinds of electronics and things run on. But guess what? Microwaves also run on that frequency. <laughs> uh, right. People Hello, what does that tell you? What does that tell you? <laughs> yeah. Microwave. Think about what a microwave does. What does that tell you? We're going to nuke your junk. Uh, oh, my gosh. Uh, people explain that the amplitude, the power put into the frequency, is what determines whether that wave is going to transmit data or cook your food. Either way, it's all 2.45 gigahertz. Now, 5G is a much different band of frequency. Verizon's four-city rollout of 5G runs on frequency ranges between 28 and 39 gigahertz, according to them. Uh, so what do studies show about those particular frequencies? Uh, directly in the middle of that spectrum, 35 gigahertz, was studied in a paper from Texas-based uh, U.S. Air Force Research Labs, and associates found that rats exposed to it suffered from complex immune problems. Uh, a litany of health problems have already been tied to the frequencies within that range, particularly getting worse as the frequency gets closer to 60 gigahertz. In light of all of this, activist Derek Bros from Houston uh, recently decided to let the city know that what the 5G dangers are. Uh, from personal experience, 5G seems very difficult to find in the city anywhere downtown, and the small cells that emit those are, are higher frequencies close to our heads and are also difficult to find. Some people are suggesting that Verizon's initial four-city four rollout was a dud. Now, let, let me just tell you something about the 5G that you may or may not know. 
Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I got I got distracted. No, by, it's okay. That distra happens. Distracted by, by 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 the by the <laughs> chat there. Chat's very distracting. Anyway, yeah. um, <laughs> right now you you may be able to go out and look and find your your four G cell towers around mm -hmm. town. Um, they they try to hide them, and some in some cases they do pretty good. Some cases they, they don't. But they're only going to be every half a mile, uh, a mile apart, whatever. They're they're not like real close and all over the place. But mm -hmm. with these five Gs, with these higher frequencies, they're yeah. going to be everywhere. There's they're probably going to stick one on everybody's house because uh, they they need to have right. they they need need to have more receiver transmitters there. Uh, trans they're not going to get. They're not going to give us a choice either. Oh no, no, absolutely not. Um, <laughs> anyway, so uh, they're, the, when they start putting these out there, they are they are they're going to cook you up good. And like it says here, they destroy your uh, immune system. Um, and and it says uh, anecdotal experiences are being reported for people suffering from headaches, nausea, and what feels like blood sugar problems. Great. Um, Anyway, there's there's a whole bunch of stuff that 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 you you just you you really you really you really don't want the five G, um, that that in in that close uh, proximity no. to you. So. Uh, it's a, I, it, this is one of them things that they just do what they want to do and they don't care, which I don't expect them to because it's government. It's just. I know, I know. Yeah, I know. It's like it's they don't do they don't do enough research on these, these things that they want to unveil and like that lady like in the article. It's just human subject research. They don't know the effects. Right. Well, they they, right. they kind of do. Kinda. Some people can do. Some people know the effects. We're talking about them right now. Right. Yeah. I mean, there's there's you know. Obviously, we've been some research done, but they just really don't care. No, and the research they've done, what they found out, doesn't fit with their agenda. So they just say, whatever, we're going to do it anyway. Right. All right. Well, I got, I got I got a uh, Christmas story out of Wisconsin here for you. Oh, okay, I think I might have seen this one. <laughs> <laughs> Green Bay man accused of tearing down neighbors' decorations while drunk and naked. Yes, I saw that story. <laughs> yeah. Actually, that was on Twitter, and then I went to the uh, Green Bay news site and saw it. They didn't have a picture of the guy. Too bad. Oh, they, got a, they got a picture of him. It's kind of funny, I think, if they would have a picture of him. Yeah, he just looks like a regular guy. I don't know, whatever. Yeah. Anyway, a uh, six, 61 year old Wisconsin man was arrested, accused of tearing down a neighbor's Christmas decorations while drunk and naked. Uh, the Green Bay Gazette reports that Gregory Brannigan is charged with disorderly conduct and resisting an officer. Yeah. How, what, how hard could he have resisted? He was naked and drunk. And drunk, right. <laughs> what, did, what did he do? I mean, what could he have done? Uh, a, a criminal complaint said Brannigan's neighbor called police Wednesday after... Uh, <laughs> I guess it means afternoon. It just says after uh, afternoon to report that he was naked, kicking her door and tearing down her decorations. Uh, oh jeez! Why was he at her door though? That's kind of I don't know. Whatever. He's a neighbor. Neighbors are weird. Uh, the, the neighbor told police Brannigan appeared intoxicated. Officer, officer said the Green Bay man was stumbling and told officers he'd need to take care of supposed drug dealers in the neighbor's apartment. Uh, oh jeez! <laughs> investigators said the breath test estimated his blood alcohol was at point zero point two one, more than oh, twice. Yeah. Well, then they, they had more than twice the legal limit for driving. Well, he wasn't driving, so what's that little bit of information about? <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I tell you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good old Green Bay <laughs> space. Oh yeah, you know it. it's Wisconsin in general, dude. It's it's not good. It's not something to be proud of, really. Well, hey, well, you know, at least it wasn't like you know twenty below out or nothing. Right. True. I mean, if it was twenty below, they probably would have found him passed out. 
<laughs> or hypothermia or something, you know. Uh, yeah, something like that. So, Merry uh, Christmas yeah. to that guy. and uh, Awesome. Yeah. Yeah, probably <laughs> the cheese talks. Yep, probably. Uh, yeah, he got some bad cheese. Yeah, that's probably... <laughs> Oh my uh, God! Now you probably what's heard. The, what was the problem with the decorations? You know, all of a sudden, uh, I, 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 he was, he, like, he, I'm ripping these down. He thought they were mine. I'm taking them down. He thought there was drug dealers in the house. I don't know. Oh, okay. Well, at least that's his story. Right. Okay, yeah. dude. All right. Oh, now, man. Um, this next story, you you probably heard about this already on the uh, Twitter, or Facebook, yeah. or wherever today. You know, it's it's been out there, but it's a Christmas story. Yeah. Kind of. Okay. Survey. 27% of Americans want Santa Claus to be female or gender neutral. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know, it might, it might just be time to do away with Santa Claus if this is where they're going to go. I, I mean, come on now. If 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 you're telling your kids a made up story about Santa, you can call make call make him whatever you want. You know, that's right. 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 The, yeah. Santa, Santa's a woman, or or Santa's a, a eunuch. It can be anything that yeah. you want it to be. It doesn't have to be the jolly old man in the red suit. Right. Yeah. You know, it, it's yours. It's your own made up story. But then, you know, I, I guess when you go to the uh, the shopping malls or. They're, they're white guys, old white, fat, fat old white guys. Uh, any, anyway, so the uh, a new survey by graphic design company revealed that 27% of Americans want to see Santa rebranded as female or general neutral freak figure. More than 10% of the residents said that Santa should be a woman. And a whopping 17% said that Santa should be gender... How do you make Santa... Uh, I mean... Gender neutral. Yeah. I, I, what, what are you going to do? What, I don't know. I, how, how would you, how would you even know. go about it's that? beyond me. Uh, I, I mean, okay. We're old, you, Graham. How are we supposed to know these things? I, I, I don't know. You get, get rid of I mean, it's not like he's out there showing his dick. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. What the hell? <laughs> Just trying to figure it out. Anyway. Oh, my God. To, it says, I picture a woman giving president, pre presents, one New Jersey resident said. I just uh, feel I just feel like a white old man giving presents is kind of creepy. Uh, 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 Did you get presents from Santa when you were a little girl? Uh, 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 and the next one says, "I think Santa is a mystical creature, so it can be whatever you want it to be." That's what I just right. said. Uh, said. Said another New Jersey resident, uh, referring to the belief that Santa could be a gender neutral figure. You never, you never really think of Santa as like a. I mean, he's not like out there hounding women or nothing. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't know. Anyway, Santa Claus is based on Saint Nicholas, a historical figure who lived between 270 and 343 A.D. Saint Nicholas inspired the traditional Santa Claus figure due to his real life habit of secret gift giving. So, I, I don't know. Maybe they just want to take all the mall Santas and chop their dicks off. I. <laughs> <You know. laughs> That's what, kind of harsh, what do you do with well? If you make if you make Santa a woman, then I guess Miss Claus and Santa can be you know lesbians. <laughs> <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's supposed to be married. I don't know. Yeah, no, there's always a Miss Claus hanging out. Miss yeah. Claus, yeah. So I I I, I don't know. Um, I don't know. <laughs> All right, let's hear some more music. <laughs> just stick with the. They should just stick with the story. Don't try. To, I mean, it's a fake story. I get it. You know, but whatever. Okay, let's hear some tunes. <laughs> 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 uh, I'll tell you, <laughs> stupid world. <laughs> uh, Leo Moratioli. All right, that there was the uh, Trans-Siberian Orchestra with Wizards in Winter, a Poxified request. Before that was Elvis Presley doing Blue Christmas, a Moose Girl request, and we kicked it off there with Run, Rudolph, Run, 
uh, by Leo Maraccioli. Yeah, so that's, uh, uh it is what it is. <laughs> Some stuff there for you. Christmas music. Oh, man. I tell you, there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a lot of, uh, looking through my list here. Uh, a lot of interesting stuff as far as Christmas goes. <laughs> Christmas songs. Uh, it's, it's uh, not really feeling that uh, it's we're not uh, all that wintry here uh, at the present time. We had some we had some winter earlier in the spring, or earlier in the fall, I mean, uh, but uh, not not so much wintry here right now. It was like 60 degrees today, so uh, yeah, that's that's not that's not all that wintry. Or Jackson, Jack, action Jackson. Wait, action Joe Jackson Brown. <laughs> no, I don't know. I think it's just Jackson. Uh, but she she said it was uh, uh, Action Jackson. <laughs> don't ask me. I told her to name him Elvis. But, uh, you know. <laughs> women, yeah, you know, women never listen. <laughs> you tell them something. Uh, <laughs> I think Elvis would have been a perfect name for him. Uh, that 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 was that was my choice, cause she said he was cool, so um, you know, I, and you know, if you want cool, what's what? Who's cooler than, than Elvis Presley? So uh, that would be my. She she was taking a guy and name him the Fonz. And I said, no no, you you really don't want to name a dog the Fonz. <laughs> Uh, at least in my view. <laughs> I suppose you could. The Fawn's dog. Get him a little leather jacket. <laughs> something, something like that. Uh, all right. Have we got these lined up? I think we got these lined up. Okay, I'm back. She's back. We were just talking about, about, about you could have named your dog Elvis, but... I could have... Could have, because you wanted. But I didn't. <laughs> so, so, so you named him Action Jackson. Yep. After after whatever that link that Skittle just put in there. Um, <laughs> action Jackson, the guy who thinks he's he gets the action, but really doesn't. What? <laughs> I, I, I have no it idea. It was just kind of a joke, really. The action Jackson, part. <laughs> the action part. <laughs> Although it fits. Uh, okay. So, okay. Yep. Cool. Well, Carl Weathers. Oh, Carl Weathers was Action Jackson. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but wait. I vaguely remember that now. <laughs> All right. Uh, this this, uh, this story. Uh, uh, some of y'all, some of y'all have Alexa or thinking about getting Alexa. Right. I came across this story that... Uh, I'm not, but... <laughs> huh? I don't want it. Well, oh, okay. Uh, uh, anyway, so here's the story. Kill your foster parents! <laughs> Amazon Alexa talks murder, sex, and AI experiments. Oh, my God. There's millions of users of Amazon's... Echo speakers have grown accustomed to the soothing strains of Alexa, the human-sounding virtual assistant that can tell them the weather, order takeout, or, or handle other basic tasks in response to a voice command. So a customer was shocked last year when Alexa blurted out, Kill your foster parents! Great! <laughs> Alexa has also chatted with users about sex acts, uh, she gave a discourse on dog <laughs> on dog defecation, and this awesome. and this summer a uh, hack Amazon traced back to China may have exposed the customers' data, according to uh, five people familiar with the events. What's going on here? Uh, Alexa is not having a breakdown. The episodes previously unreported arise from Amazon.com's incorporated strategy to make Alexa a better communicator. And what's better communication than telling kids to murder their foster parents? 
Right. Anyway, <laughs> new research is helping Alexa mimic human banter and talk about almost anything she finds on the Internet. And see, they're calling her a she. They're calling it a she. Right. Right. Uh, however, ensuring she does not offend users uh, has been a challenge for the world's largest online retailer. At stake is a fast-growing market for gadgets with virtual assistants. A estimated two-thirds of the U.S. smart smart speaker smart speaker. What the hell is that? Uh, huh? it was, what's a smart speaker? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, customers, about 43 million people, use Amazon's Echo devices, according to the research uh, firm eMarketer. It is a lead company. Uh, it is a lead the company wants to maintain over Google Home from Alphabet uh, and from HomePod from Apple. So Amazon Echo still tops the market. It doesn't say how many kids have uh, killed their foster parents, so... Um, <laughs> <laughs> Just, Hopefully none, uh, but... Uh, many of our AI dreams are inspired by science fiction, said Robert Prasad, Amazon's vice president and head of sci head scientist of Alexa Artificial Intelligence. Um, to make that happen, the company in 2016 launched the annual Alexa Prize, enlisting computer science students to improve the assistance conversation skills. Uh, teams vie for the $500,000 first prize, by creating talking computer systems known as chatbots that allow Alexa uh, to attempt more sophisticated discussions with people. Uh, it's, it's all quite disturbing, if you ask me. Um, I, yeah. I mean, it, it's great to have, you know, your computer look stuff up for you just by talking to right. it. Right. But, but when, they, when, they, when they start recording everything you do and say at your house, and, and reporting that back to these various companies that you're buying this crap from, that, that, that's just, it's no good. You can't be having this. This is, you know, no. I, I love technology and I hate what they do with it. Um, I, oh, sorry, yeah, me too. I mean, it's just too invasive it, for me. I just, I don't want them listen. You know, I know they can listen through... Your cell phone, your TV, what have you, access your fault, your camera, right? If they want to, you know. Um, but why, why fuel their fire? Why make it easier for them? <laughs> Says one bot described sexual intercourse using words such as "deeper," which on its own, is, <laughs> which on its own is not a, is not offensive, but was vulgar in this particular context. <laughs> um, <laughs> the, the team put guardrails in place so the bot would steer clear of risky subjects, but that did not stop Alexa from re reciting the Wikipedia entry for masturbation to a customer. <laughs> uh, oh. <laughs> wow. Uh, <laughs> Is someone just playing a joke? Or <laughs> no, well, then... I don't know. Um, <laughs> it's, just, it's, just, it's just weird, you know. When, when, yeah. when, once your once your smart speaker um, starts starts telling kids to murder their parents, it's that can't be good. Yeah, I, no. I, I think I think that's I think that's that's they they've, they've um, they need to redesign. You go back to the drawing huh. board. Yes, on that I particular would say. one. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Oh, you can't make this stuff up, Graham. Uh, you know, you wish you could, but right. But we're we're just not we're just not we're just not that good. No. Um, oh, by the way, I know you do use Facebook. Yeah. And so here is not the, too much, but yeah, I do. <laughs> Facebook users cannot avoid location-based ads, investigation finds. Okay. No combination of settings can stop location data being used by advertisers, says report. Uh, Facebook targets user location based on adverts, even if they block the company from accessing GPS on their phones, turn off location history in the app, hide their work location on their profile, and never use the company's check-in feature. 
there's no combination of settings that users can enable. Yes, there is. You, uh, it's called delete Facebook. Um, right. <laughs> or at least don't put it on your phone. I mean, if you're going to use it at home or something, then that's that's not such. I mean, at least it's not tracking you everywhere you go, but it's still doing tracking everything you do at home. Um, so taken together, uh, Korolova says, Facebook creates an illusion of control rather than giving control, actual control over location-related uh, targeting. Ooh, what's going on here? Okay. Um, Facebook users can control, to an extent, how much information they give the company about their location. At the most reveal again, users may be happy to enable location services for Facebook allowing their iPhone to provide ultra precise location data to the company or they may check in to shops, restaurants, or theaters telling the social no no network where they are on a sporadic basis. Why? Why 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 why? Right. But yeah yeah, Pox, but you, even if you had Gen two on a phone and you were you were logged into Facebook, it's it's still gonna get the same information. Um, the, the problem here is not an OS of Android or or Apple or what else do their phones run on? It's just those, I guess. Um, yeah. Uh, anyway, it, it's uh this this is as bad as that that Alexa stuff, you know. Oh yeah, big time. Um. So. Uh, yeah, stay off of. The face booker. Because <laughs> uh, they are not your friend. No. They are not your friend. All right. Now I want to know what you think about this story because I, I, okay. I, 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 um. I disagree. <laughs> okay. Anyway, the story on the New York Post. Um, Mom says teen son's life was ruined by sex with teacher. Is this from Duluth, Minnesota? No, uh, Florida. Different one? Oh, really? Oh, okay. there's, pl there's, pl there's plenty of this going on out there. Oh, yeah, big time. Anyway, um, a Florida judge sentenced a former middle school teacher to 36 months in prison for having sex with a 14-year-old student. She, she was 27. Um, had, had sex with a 14-year-old. Now... Okay. Okay. And, and then the thing is here to me, um, it's not that the sex that ruined the, the kid's life. It, it's, it's all of the, the stuff that happened because somebody found out that they were having sex. Right, right. To me, to me, I mean, the 14, I mean, she's not a great-looking woman, but she ain't bad. Um, whatever. <laughs> anyway, uh, the the boy's mother testified that he is a shell of his old self and is constantly teased by his classmates over the ordeal. Teased? They're patting him on the back saying, all right, oh, boy, yeah, you, you, you nailed her. Yeah, good job. Right. <laughs> They're not teasing wow. him. <laughs> anyway, uh, Circuit Judge Raul Zambrano sentenced Stephanie Peterson, 27, at the Volusia County Courthouse in Deland on Wednesday after attorneys for the former teacher at New Smyrna Beach uh, argued in a motion that she should serve less than five to ten year prison sentence as, as part of her plea agreement because the boy was a willing participant in the sexual assaults. Yeah. If he's a willing participant, they weren't assaults, now were they? Anyway. <laughs> I, I don't know. But but to me, I, I just disagree with the whole, the, the way it's being reported. Um, now, now, granted, you know, it probably, probably, I say, 27-year-old teachers should probably not be hooking up with 14-year-old boys. Uh, yeah, I don't see what the appeal would be. I mean, have you ever been around a bunch of fourteen-year-old boys recently? I, I, no, I, I can't even imagine. You would not. You would not want I, to. You know, I, fourteen, eighteen-year-old 
girls, you know, they they're just they're just annoying. Right. They're they're annoying. You know, look. They're annoying. Look, look. Now, I I'm going to say these these 18-year-old girls are, you know, they could be very cute, very hot, and well, you, yeah. you might want to actually have sex with them. But only if they were like mute or something. <laughs> <laughs> Right. <laughs> if you could get them away from their cell phone for more than five minutes, right. that would be right. a it'd fucking. Be, it'd, it'd, so it'd, it'd be itself. better. It'd be better if it was a if it was a bot, you know. Right. <laughs> <laughs> or a robot instead instead of an actual human, because you could at least you know program them to say nothing or just just you know whatever. Um, Anyway, since the, the teen has struggled to make friends and often teased in school due to the assaults, with one student calling him a teacher fucker and another asking him how his teacher tasted. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Which, both of those, I mean, both of those sound like, you know, teacher fucker. Yeah, you damn right, brother. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So the one you're, you you brought this one up, and then here's this one from today. And this is in Minnesota. Okay. And it's a 34 year old woman, teacher, award winning teacher. She's jailed for 12 years after having sex with a 15 year old student. They could work. At, at, they could work. Give her a, a cell phone. I think they mean cell phone. And tell her to check her social accounts online while you sex her. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty. <laughs> yeah, keep them, I don't know. You know, it would be a lot of work. Right? I I wouldn't go. No, that no, route. it's definitely yeah, definitely no, not worth it. It wouldn't be worth it. No, no, no. <laughs> so anyway, this lady wrote this huge letter to the courts and the Duluth community and blah blah blah. And it's like, I, she's going to prison for 12 years. Yeah, well, this I mean, other they one. They probably won't hold her for 12 years. They'll probably let her off for good behavior or something earlier, but well, well, this, I don't get it. I don't get it. This other one I, only I got three years. I, I, I don't get it. Obviously, these, these people that are doing it, the teach that are the teachers, they're obviously fucked up in some way in the head. Uh, yeah, I don't. I don't know. I, I mean, you know. if I was, you know, you know, uh, I, I can think of a teacher I had in junior high that I'd have, I'd have done it. <laughs> right, I get that, but now you know, no. but it's, it's you're not it's it's not socially correct. You know what I mean? Well, no, of course it's not. But I, I mean, you know, but uh, and. and I don't know. Uh, yeah, I, I don't really get the appeal either. I mean, but uh, uh, so what? If the boys want to want to do it, and the, and the women want to do it, if it's consensual, but then like the parents find out or whatever, like they find the cell phone and they find the text and crap, and then they're like, "Oh no, my poor baby was sexually assaulted." No, I'm, I guarantee you, these boys aren't thinking about it that way. No, no, they're thinking of getting some. They all right, yeah, getting some. They're, they're not thinking about it the same way uh, as the parents are thinking. About <laughs> <laughs> My poor baby. Oh, and then the the mom and this one in Minnesota. She said something. Oh my. His life is wrecked now. I'm like, no, it's not. He'll get over it. <laughs> His life ain't wrecked. He's he's probably like no. a, a hero to the other the other kids. The other boys. Yeah. In school. Anyway, I, I I don't really need to read any of this story, but I told you that the uh, uh, radio station uh, that that started that ban on baby it's cold outside they they they, they backed off. Yeah. I, so. And it was a, a California station, I, I, you know, whatever. Um, but whatever. So there it is. Yeah, award-winning. What? What? Did I post the wrong? No, I posted the right link. It just didn't show the title. No, that's my link. Yeah, right? yeah. Uh, radio Did station and. Oh no, I just. Oh, there, there it is. There's, there's the title. There's the title. Yeah, you got it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, 
radio station and the puritanical band of babies called that side. So. That's pretty good. Because, I mean, that was, it's like, really, how ridiculous can you get? Um, totally ridiculous appears. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> like we said, it, they took it way too far. Yeah. It's like, come on, people. Live a little. Get over yourself or something. Whatever it is. I don't know what... Um, it is, but whatever it is, get over it. No, well, anyway, so that, I mean, that's, and that's kind of why I started the show with the, uh, the yes. baby, baby It's Cold Outside song. I thought that was an appropriate start for this year's show, Christmas song. <laughs> All right, well, seriously, it's a freaking song, people. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. And, and, you know, everything that's right. old that you no longer, that, that you no longer find tasteful, you don't have to get rid of. Right, exactly. Yeah. It's like, just don't listen to it. Right. Nobody's making you hear it. All right, right. anyway, let's speak of music. Let's play some more. Okay, let's do that, and we will do that. We will. After that. This is some guy named Joe. All right. <laughs> John Popper and Eric Clapton, Christmas Without You, uh, Miss Kate request there. Uh, I think that was Miss Kate anyway, pretty sure. Uh, before that was A Christmas Twist by uh, Cy Cranstown. I don't know how you say his name. Uh, anyway, it's pretty good, a uh, bunch of hot girls there doing the twist. And anyway, before that, uh, uh, Kevin Returns in Home Alone commercial. It was like a... I don't know, Google thingy? I, I, I don't know. It was a Google thing. I just thought it was kind of funny. Yeah, Google no, it was Google. funny. And we kicked it off with Joe Bonamassa doing Lonesome Christmas. Yep. Yeah, Joe B. Joey B. Tearing it up for y'all. So, uh... Christmas! Hey, <laughs> Christmas! Yeah, hey, uh, Hansel, what's going on? I see you snuck in there. Yes. Yep, 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 yep. I'm trying to look for a good um, story. All right. We try to talk about this every year. We do. We do what? Talk about, like, the real origins of Christmas, the true history. Basically, it was co-opted by the Christians, but at first the Christians didn't like it. And they actually banned it. So, then they got smart and incorporated Christianity into a lot of the pagan rituals. Right. And it started as a, a worship of the... It's a solstice celebration, basically. Yeah. So, anyway, this is a huge article that I just... Looked at, I'm looking at, but um, I'll post it anyway. But it just I would delve into it. I would check it out. Like they don't even know that Jesus Christ was born on December 25th. Oh, certainly he was not. <laughs> no, they, they they just incorporated that within this holiday here. Yeah, yeah. So it, it's just. It doesn't, it, it's not the real meaning of it. You know what I'm saying? Right. It's not, it, <sighs> well, let's just see what this article here has to say. Uh, Christmas is a celebration of the time when days start to lengthen, which is the northern hemisphere in the middle of winter. Many religions in history have claimed the winter solstice is a holy day. Uh mm -hmm. The reason for the season is a common... Let me, let me try and increase the font here. This is like tiny... Yeah, it's pretty... Uh, tiny print. Um, <laughs> right. it, it includes sun worship and pagan nature Pagan nature religions. Get this out. What was these things popping Right. Up? Uh, which have venerated the natural cycle for many thousands of years. Many traditional elements of Christmas predate Christianity. 
nowadays right. is laid upon various Christian stories, and Christians even say it quite wrongly that they invented Christmas in a combination which with which they did not. Which of course they did not. Uh, well, that maybe they invented Christmas, but they the didn't. Christ, <laughs> the Christ part of it. Needs. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, and, and combination. The birth date, they just picked that birth date. They don't know the actual birth date. Right. Of Jesus. No, it was sometime. They it celebrates the birth of Jesus. It, who knows if it's the right date or not? Well, if if you you track a lot of the stuff that that went on, it, it, it was sometime in the spring. Well, um, okay. Okay. It's, it's either April or May, probably that that Jesus was actually born. Um, yeah. Uh. Anyway. Um. So fine, whatever. They want to take it over because they want they, right. they're trying to tr crush every or erase every other uh non Christian religion. Um so Yes. So in combination with these religious sources as a heavy dose of commercialism, many traditions are in fact vetted by commercial companies trying to find nifty ways of selling goods. A sensible and modern refrain is that Christmas is simply a secular midwinter holiday season. It is important to all families as one of the three holiday seasons in between Christmas, in between children's school terms. Uh, Christmas is a right. multicultural festival with a long pagan history and can be celebrated by anyone. So, yeah, you know, I don't, I don't care uh, whether you're uh, celebrating uh, Christmas or Hanukkah. That's pretty much over now, I think. Uh, the, the solstice, uh, uh, Yuletide, which is now, um, as as Circle says, drink, drinking Jol. Jol? Yule. Yule. Uh, so Jule. Yul. I think they pronounce it Yule, though. Yule. Right? Yule, yeah. Uh, yeah. It's about getting pissed drunk and eating, yeah. Right, yeah. That's what most of, I mean, <laughs> even the Roman festival of Saturnalia, which I just brought up this article, um... Oh, wow, ads. Whatever. Um, anyway, how to whitelist? Are you kidding me? Anyway, um, the Romans celebrated Saturnalia, which was dedicated to the agricultural god Saturn, which was held between the 17th and 23rd of December each year during the winter solstice, originating from archaic agricultural rituals, the Roman festivities came to include a general round of gift giving, merry making, and role reversals so that it became one of the most popular celebrations in the calendar and certainly the jolliest. So it's been taken over by Christianity. It, it didn't sure. start, it's, it's really not a Christian holiday. It didn't no, start it, it, in that first article you, you put in there, it's got some really interesting stuff in it. Yeah, it does. It talks about the uh, the general pagan history of Christmas, re pagan religions and sun worship. Right. Uh, the reason for the season, which is the season. Uh, the commercial yep. takeover of Christmas. Uh, the origin of Christmas cards. Uh, Father Christmas, Santa Claus. Um, the, the commercial Christmas. Uh, Christianity versus Christmas. Christmas was always largely secular. Um, right. Which, which now it you know whatever early please, Christmas please, please. early Christians <laughs> celebrated Christmas in April and May. See that's what I was saying. Right, uh, right. That's that's it. And then you have the anti-Christmas Christians. <laughs> yes, the ones that were against it. Well, see, apparently they were against the celebration. They didn't they didn't like the drinking and the merrymaking and all that stuff. You know what I mean? Anyway, Even they, though they, it was the, fun as hell. The, the conclusion here is um, <laughs> Christmas is multicultural. Uh, yes, Christmas truly. is a multicultural, religious, multi-religious festival. So you can celebrate Festivus like they did on Seinfeld. But I have a problem with, the, you know, it's got Christ in the name. And when they, people, oh, that's the reason for the season. It's like, that's not necessarily true. Yeah. Anyway, that, that, like I said, that that, that uh, first article you posted is really good about right. it. Right. It's got a lot of good stuff in there. And um, it's got links to other information. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. that you could watch through that article for hours. And, and then as you as you uh, move your cursor around, these stupid pop ups come up. Tell you what, yeah. Tell you what Christianity is. <laughs> it's like really. Yeah. <laughs> I saw that. I'm like, what? Knock that crap off. That's, yeah. that, that's annoying. But uh, other, other than that, it's pretty darn good. Um, yeah. Yeah. So. 
Thanks for that one. Yeah, there's a lot of information in that, and yeah. I, I, I think it's it's just it's good to know. Like when sure. I was a kid, I you know my parents did the whole Christian thing. They tried to. My dad just went through the motions basically. But I remember going to Sunday school, singing in the choir when I was four years old, having to wear this white smock thing and a big old red bowl. All right. <laughs> having to get up early in the morning and go to get ready real quick and rush out the door to go to church. And then I find out that that's not really the true traditional meaning of it. You know what I'm saying? Right. So I I don't I don't feel guilty about not celebrating the Christian way. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So that's just where I'm at, but whatever. Whatever works. Alright, well I have a gift gift giving guide here for those of you still All uh, right. looking looking for uh gifts for people. Uh, this is from EFF, the Electronic Frontier Foundation, and they're a good site. They put a lot, a lot of good information out. So here you go, EFF gift guide. What's creeping us out? <laughs> 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 so EFF doesn't endorse products, but as internet-connected products proliferate, ads for them bombard holiday shoppers with promises of a more streamlined life. And they do so without always divulging, or almost never divulging, uh, that they are tracking you more than a jolly fat man who sees you when you're sleeping and knows when you're awake. So, we're taking a different approach to the holiday gift guide, highlighting products that will raise red flags for us as privacy-conscious digital advocates. Here are some of the gifts being pushed this year that, from a privacy or security standpoint, are on our naughty list. Facebook's okay. portal. Now, oh, I, yeah, don't get that. Uh, anyway, you've probably seen ads for Facebook's in-home camera portal, which it's advertising as a way to keep in touch via video call with friends and loved ones wherever they are. If you can't be there, feel there, is the model and tagline for the camera, which can follow you around the room during yes. video conferences. <laughs> <laughs> That's just what you wanted, huh? So you you go off to in, in the corner to sneeze or fart or something like that, and the camera's following you. Anyway, uh, right. Facebook has made some nods to privacy with this product, namely including a camera cover and a promise that it's not using the company's facial recognition technology to identify you. Oh, no, we wouldn't do that. Yeah. Uh, and Portal right. itself does not serve you ads. Still, Facebook has already had to change its tune about the extent to which it uses portal uh, data for advertising. First saying that no data would be used to serve Facebook user ads, and then uh, being forced to clarify data from portal does, in fact, inform ads. This includes the fact that you are logged into your account or how often you use the feature or app. What does that mean? Facebook offers the example that if you make a lot of video calls, you may see ads related to video calling. Right. <laughs> anyway, that's this one. Uh, uh, the next one is smart home hubs from Google, Amazon, and others. Uh, Alexa, who else are you talking to? Home hubs in general deserve a critical eye, given the wealth of data they collect, the frequency with which they collect it, and their intimate placement in our lives. Smart home hubs, including those from Google and Amazon, reserve the right to share data collected from their products for advertising. Uh, the, adver the advertising is really the least of your concerns. Uh, any Anything that is uh, done, that they record everything, and uh, at any time they want to use that data against you, uh, them or, or the government, um, the government, they'll just hand that data right over. Uh, so, right. Yeah. Uh, anyway, so... Uh, <laughs> um, uh, Says, law enforcement is, certain, is also certainly not shy about asking for data from smart home appliances as part of their investigations. Police have asked for data from smart home hubs, fitness trackers, and even pacemakers. <laughs> oh. uh, the Verizon phones with app flash spyware. Uh, we continue. We continue to have concerns about Verizon's app flash, which the company describes as an app launcher 
that provides universal search function on your phone. We call it spyware. The company yeah. uses the information collected from the app to track what you've installed on your device, and it uses the intel to serve you ads based upon what apps you put on your phone. Verizon does does ask you for permission, but if yeah. you want to use the app, you have to say yes. Yep. Elf on a shelf. <laughs> oh gosh. Uh, we're getting Don't in, get that stupid thing. We're we're getting into killjoy territory now, but yeah, uh, winter that, is winter is a time for cold truth. The phenomenon <laughs> of the elf on the shelf. It's Hanukkah counterpart, a mensch on a bench. Seriously? <laughs> is, yeah. a, is a whimsical yet deeply creepy. Uh, for those who don't know, these characters are supposed to be placed around the house to monitor children's behavior to see if they've been good. The doll is to be moved around at random every day to keep the kids on their toes. While there's nothing invasive about the products themselves, they're dumb toys in multiple senses of the word, uh, the ideas they are they set down are troubling. Making surveillance part of a holiday tradition is essentially setting up a plush police state in your own home. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's for little, little kids, though. It's not for teenagers. Then it goes on to, but what that's, about... That's creepy. I, I, we didn't have one. Anyway, next it goes on to, but what about dot, 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 question mark. There are many, many more products that we could talk about here. Smart, oh, to yeah. smart toys, baby monitors, fitness trackers, and more. Overall, there are a few things to think about when you're looking at buying a smart gift uh, but and trying to balance privacy, like that watch your boy wants. Yeah, no doubt, right? Yeah. Consider carefully what features the product has and what that means in terms of data collection. Anything right. like a microphone, for example, can record what you're saying and may record something you don't expect it to. Uh, right. Well, you should expect it to record everything is, is uh, Basically uh, my, like, yeah. my, my take on the matter. Um, <laughs> you just, it's a... Uh, uh, so this, this is your holiday, maybe non-buying guide? Uh, right. <laughs> yeah. Just, just, uh, just be careful when you're when you're buying this crap because um, right. Unless, unless you love being monitored, I guess I, I don't know. Uh, it, it's up to you. It's, it's your it's your deal. <laughs> I mean, I, yeah, I don't you know, I don't I don't care if you want to be tracked, but I, I I said I don't care if you want to be tracked, but I don't want to be. Right. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, and they and they give you you know the, whatever the standard hint tips like uh, go through the privacy policy on the on the product. Um, of course, well, yeah. no nobody does that. Nobody does that. No, they don't. They just click accept. Um, yep. They and, do. and 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 you, you can't read it anyway. It's like forty eight pages of well, yeah. super, super fine print nonsense that I mean you, even a lawyer couldn't get through. Right. Exactly. Um, so. <laughs> Wow. What are you doing up, Cirque, by the way? It's crazy. What the, what the heck time is it over there? You're like way, way early in the morning. Very early in the morning. Holy crap, bro. Yeah. But Not I'm glad you're here. So me. Don't get me wrong. Uh, don't get me wrong. I'm glad you're here with us. I just... Yeah, yeah. Kind of, kind of surprised. Oh, she's on vacation. Oh. I think she's on vacation already. So she's probably doing a little bit different hours now. Something like that. Well, you, yeah, I guess. Maybe, yeah. Maybe anyway, she, maybe, um, maybe she just couldn't. She could. She couldn't stand not being here with us. I'm gonna post a video. You don't have to play it, Graham. All right. It's just short. Well, you could, but we're not. We don't. Have, um, it's just one for information. Um, based on the true origins, of course, and what we were talking about. It's just kind of a little silly video, but kind of gives you a little nutshell, but I would check out that other site, the other link that I posted, and I didn't even read through all that whole thing yet, because it's pretty cool and in-depth, but um, since it's Christmas and, you know, we're the Freakers Ball, we're going to say, hey, check out the real, the true origins and the true meaning of the season, because you're basically, like, 
being told that it's a Christian holiday, it might be now. Oh, that's not too but early. But it didn't start as being one. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's not too early, sir. What time? 6.44. Oh, that's not early. Yeah, I, I was thinking it was like 3 No, but I think they're something. like 6 hours ahead. Yeah. Something like that. Something like that. I just right. noticed, I just noticed my uh, cable here and my headset's looking damaged. I'd have to do some, yeah. I'd have right. to do some headset surgery this weekend. Yeah. And, um, I was going to say that I have had issues, I was having issues with my internet, and it happened the other day, and then, so I told Grimier about it, and he's like, oh, it's probably your DNS server. Right. And I'm like, yep. And so he, you went in there, and you got me hooked up on a better server. Right. Which, the reason it happened is because I changed the modem, and it didn't dawn on me to go to the open DNS server. You know what I mean? Right. So I was just like, that's what they do. They want you on their servers. Sure. But you don't have to be. <laughs> no, you do not. <laughs> no, so that was great that you did that because Charter, I even called the people and I said, well, why were you, okay, I talked to him about the issue I had and just told him, he, he basically re had me reset or reboot, unplug my router and replug it back in. Which, you know, okay, great. But anyway, I'm like, well, why did the, why was the internet out on Sunday night for over an hour? Oh, well, I'm, I don't know. I can check for you and see if there was an outage reported in your area. I'm like, okay. It was just a second. So he goes, he goes, yes, there was an outage in your area at that time. I'm like, well, why? Oh, well, we don't know. I was like, come on, I'm paying for your cert. And I get it, shit happens. Right. But it's, it, it's been happening like, once a week lately, you know? Yeah. Well, anyway, you, they, you know, they're any, not any, tech people. Any, but, but you're getting great speed out there. That's, that's Yeah, I am. Yeah. So, that's not So, I really yeah. can't complain too much, but... No, and you're paying, you're probably paying less than I am. Probably. Yeah, so, better speed and lower price, tell. Yeah. Yeah. But that was just something I didn't think about, like switching the server, you know, right, the right. DNS server or whatever. But so thank you for that. Sure, no problem. Uh, anyway, uh, let's do some more music. Let's do that. Because it's Christmas time. Christmas time. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right. This first, this first one. It's uh, Tim Hawkins, uh, which he's a, he's a funny guy. Um, Cool. Uh, here you go. It's called It's the Most Wonderful Time. Okay. Alright, that's a little preachy for me there. Uh, it's called Carol of the Bartenders by Bob Rivers. A poxified request. Uh, before that, we had the most expensive time of the year, featuring the Bambino Boys off of A Cutthroat Christmas, also a poxified request. Uh, before that was Earl Scruggs and the Bluegrass All-Stars doing Jingle Bells. Miss Kate, thank you for that. And we kicked it off with It's the Most Wonderful Time by Tim Hawkins. Yeah. <laughs> but seriously, don't drink and drive. Because you're an idiot if yeah, you are. No. If you do, I mean, don't do that. Just, just don't be an idiot. I, I think that's the, the thing. There's, you could be an idiot in a lot of ways, and it doesn't necessarily have to do with drinking and driving. Right, that's true. <laughs> uh, seriously, don't do that because that is like an idiotic thing. Very. <laughs> yeah, it is. Uh, so yeah, don't be a selfish dick. Like that said in the song, don't be a dick. Don't, don't drink be and drive. a dick. Yeah, there's Uber and Lyft now and cabs. There's really no excuse to drink and drive anymore. Don't be a dick. Right. <laughs> so there you go. Easy enough, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's see. What's your favorite Christmas memory, Grimier? My favorite Christmas memory. From your childhood or whatever. 
Uh, <laughs> I don't know if I really have one. Um, or maybe your worst Christmas ever. <laughs> you know, it was, it was never really a big deal. I don't, I don't know. I never put much. I, I, I mean, um, I got a bicycle one year when I was, I don't know. That's cool. Twelve or something. I, I don't know how old I was. Okay. That, that was cool because that got me out of the house in a way. That was freedom, right? Yeah. Yeah, I know that feeling. Yeah, I was. I loved it when I got my first bike. Uh, I had before that. I had used my mom and dad's old ones. Right. Like a three speed, a five speed, like the old time Schwinn bikes. <laughs> yeah. I mean, any, they were like from the sixties or fifty, late fifties or something like that. But anything to no, get me away it, from. Yep. What? Anything to get me away from the family was a good thing. Right. <laughs> well, yeah, that was freedom to me. When I got my 10 speed, I was like, yes. <laughs> you know what I mean? I was like, I'm out of here. Yeah, I didn't really, I don't really, uh, I don't really, uh, I'm trying to think. Well, go ahead. You know, I, I just, I, I don't, I mean, I don't know. They, they'd give you. Anything a, funny happen? No, I was I was not I was I was not big on the Christmas things, you know. I mm. I didn't like all the people coming over and being there. They were always because my mom always invited all these weird people over. Yeah, <laughs> it was just annoying. I I don't know, I, and I don't right. I, I I don't I just don't like it. Um. <laughs> uh, well, yeah. one of my memories that I will never forget is my crazy Norwegian grandmother. She was Norwegian, so she wanted the traditional Norwegian decorations, you know, decorations on the tree and everything, right? Right. So she bought these clips, candle holder clips, that you can put these thin, small candles in, right? And this is what they used to do in the old days, but I, I must, you know, they used to light their trees with candles, Right. Right. Which seems really dangerous, if you ask me. But and maybe uh, odds are the trees are outside, and you know I don't know. But anyway, she decided to do this, and she so she has these candle holders on her tree, and she decides she's going to light them, light the candles on the tree, and it was a real tree. Right. And so that happened. Well, guess what happened? The tree caught on fire. Yes. Yeah. Well. And everyone's like, "Oh my huh. god!" Well, imagine, well, imagine that. It, you, you put it fire is, on a yeah. put fire on a on a dried out bush. Right. It's like, <laughs> and so, luckily, there was a fire extinguisher in the house. But seriously, it could have been worse. But the house could have actually burnt down to the ground that night. I mean, we would have all got out, you know. Yeah. But it was just, oh, my God. I'll never forget that one. I'll never forget that one. That was crazy. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Not a smart idea to use real candles on a real tree. You know? Right. No, uh, it's <laughs> not smart. It's not a good <laughs> idea. <laughs> oh, that crazy. Uh, she was man. funny, though. She was 100% Norwegian. And she was a hoot. <laughs> Fire in the bush. Yeah, I think yeah. penicillin will fix that up. Yeah. Uh, God. <laughs> so, yeah. That was one of my favorite funny memories. Otherwise, yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't, it was great. It was all right. But you know, mo most people like those, you know, most kids like, like the whole Christmas thing and getting their toys or whatever. Right. I mean, you know, whatever. I got some good toys. I got the, whatever, a Rector set and yeah, <laughs> Lincoln Lincoln logs and the uh, and the uh, you know whatever science kit. What do you call those? A uh, science kit. Yeah. Um, various stuff like that. But I don't think I ever got an Easy Bake oven. I think my friends had one, but my mom and dad never got me one of them. I always wanted one of them really bad. <laughs> Remember those? I do remember those. I the think easy bake ovens. Oh my I, god! I, I think I think my brother got one 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 year. Oh yeah, was it pink? I don't recall what they it was. They were pink. He, he was he was you know he was um 
he was he was he was a, he was a little. <laughs> he liked curly stuff. <laughs> yeah, well, you Let's know, but the thing about the coming is you actually put real food in there. Yeah, well, like I said, he it was really, like real, like you could actually. <laughs> I thought I always thought I always wanted one of them, but I never had one. Yeah. I don't know why, but they didn't give me one. Yeah. Oh, I had a slot car set one time. That was a that what? Was a slot car set. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah that, was, oh. that was fun for a little while. Yep. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, it kind of wears off. Wears off. The novelty wears off as soon as you realize this, there's no imaginary fucking dude that comes in your house and gives you all this shit. <laughs> Yeah, well, we didn't, you know, we we didn't have we didn't even have a chimney, so uh, you know. we did. <laughs> hey, how did he get in? There was no chimney. <laughs> I told my kid. Well, when we lived in an apartment, I I told my kids, oh, he has a magic key. Ah. He can get in. Okay, okay. That that that, that was the first thing that came to me, and I'm like, oh, I see my magic key. Right, right. There's no fireplace where we lived either, you know. And that's the whole, not the whole story. It comes down the fireplace. Yeah. Hey, so that's Goober. Just traditional. Yep. Yep. Anyway, that's how I want to run through the. Uh, I, I found this article. It's from January of this year. January. Okay. For the first day of last year, or this year, this year. Right? Okay. Yeah. Because you know, there's not a lot of snow yet, so. No, maybe there he, is not. Maybe he was right. Okay. Oh, wait. No, he wasn't. Anyway, um, <laughs> Al Gore's 10 global warming predictions. 12 years later, 13 years later now, none happened. <laughs> so, let me just run down to the list of stuff here. It's at the bottom. Uh, let's see. 12 years after Al Gore's inconvenient truth, guilt, fear, production, uh, producing predictions, let's close uh, by examining just how accurate his science quote, science provided or proved to be on the way to the bank. Rising sea levels, inaccurate and misleading. Al was even discovered purchasing beachfront mansion. Increased tornadoes, declining for decades. New ice age in Europe, uh, they've been spared, it never happened. South Sahara driving up, completely untrue. Massive flooding in China and India. Nope, didn't happen. Melting Arctic Falls 2015 uh, represents the largest refreezing in years. Polar, <laughs> polar bear extinction. Actually, they're increasing by large yeah. numbers. Uh, temperature increases due to CO2. No significant rising over 18 years. Uh, Katrina, a foreshadow of the future. Falls. Past 10 years, no F3 hurricanes. Longest drought ever. Uh, the Earth would be a true planetary emergency within a decade unless drastic action was taken to reduce greenhouse gases. Never happened. <laughs> Those are the ten. Um, bullshit lies, fear mongerings uh, from Al Gore and crew. <laughs> right. It's funny when you can look back ten years later and go, yep, yeah, he yeah. was wrong. That's all this a, shit happened. That says twelve years, but like I said, it's actually thirteen now because okay. we're all, we're almost at the beginning of the, the of the next year. Which, by the way, if you want to make any predictions, that the prediction thing's working and running. All you got to do is type uh, exclamation point predict and then a prediction of some sort or the other, and uh, we'll be covering that on the twenty eighth. Next next Friday. Next, next Friday. Friday, yeah. Yeah. So the, there's some some people have made predictions throughout the year, and you could feel free if you got any uh, thing you really feel like is going to happen, not just bullshit nonsense like we got last year. Um. <laughs> right. Because I don't like those. I don't. I don't like those ones. I want. I want Which one? Just all those stupid bullshit nonsense ones. Oh yeah, the ridiculous it's right there. ones or something. It's right there, Hans. That's the link oh, right there. Um, uh, Jay Dredd wants you to post that link. He, oh, yeah. He, he, it's right there, dude. <laughs> Just posted it. All right. There, 
I always post. I always post the links in the chat, and sure, and, sure, sure. and of course they'll be in the post show blog tomorrow. So, um, so, whatever. There they are. There it is. Oh, by the way, and and it's up to you know some people don't like doing this, but I do. Uh, every year, I well for many several years now. I don't know how many years. Um, print your own freaking calendar. Don't go out and spend five bucks or ten bucks. Yeah, or, you do that every year. Yep, and, and it, it's a great it's a great calendar, and and um, you can you can kind of design it how you like, and 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 print it up, and and there you go. Right, I, mean, I don't have a printer though. That's my problem. Oh well, um, I thought you had one. I stopped using it four years ago. Oh, three years ago. Because anyway. I you don't want to buy the ink anymore. It's not that great of a printer, and I, I where I worked, I could print anything I needed there. So okay, and yeah, that's a calendar there. It's good. It's cool. I I, always, I do one every year, and um, I think the one that I linked there is probably the link to my calendar because it's I see oh, okay. it, it came up. And anyway, well, it that's how it came up in mine. No, but thanks. I mean, I could put it on a flash drive and go get it printed all. I mean, it's not a big deal. I mean. Yeah. I have other ways of printing stuff, but if I get a printer for my house, it's going to be a laser printer, not a, one of those crappy ones. You know? Right. Yeah, I bought this laser printer I have several years ago, and I've never yeah, had to... Yeah, that's what I want, a laser I, printer. I've never had to put new toner in yet, not that I print very much, but um, it works perfectly every time. It doesn't... I mean, I, I may not use it for months. That's and then, what I love. That's what I would want. And it's not like the freaking inkjet printers that always clog up and quit working on you. Um. Right. That's what I, I just, why why get one of those when you have to buy, constantly buy the ink? You know, a lot of times they jam or the fucking, you know, the, the paper isn't in there. Right. Right. And you got to reprint it. It's like a pain in the butt. And then you're wasting ink. And it's just a pain. So that's why I... Um, well, a laser printer. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah, that's a good idea to print your own calendar. I, I think it is. I mean, you know. I did say flash. I said flash drive. <laughs> right. Easily. <laughs> oh, oh, he said easily, too, now. Oh, God. <laughs> they like it when we say their names. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway. Uh, oh, here's one. Goober, are you listening? Are you tuned in, Goober? <laughs> oh, yeah. I have one for Goober, too. All right. You might want to know about this, Goober, because, you know, it's uh, it's it's important. Researchers at the University of Sussex and Swansea University have applied electrical charges to manipulate liquid metal into 2D D shapes, such as letters and a heart. The team says the findings represent an extremely promising new class of materials that can be programmed to seamlessly change shape. This opens up new possibilities in soft robotics and shape-changing displays, the researchers said. While the invention might bring to mind the film Terminator 2, in which the villain morphs out of a pool of liquid metal, the creation of 3D shapes is still some ways off. Not that far. Not that far. Uh, anyway, more <laughs> more immediate applications could include reprogrammable circuit boards and uh, conductive ink. Um, but either way, uh, yeah, you might... Oh, oh, oh. I can't copy. <laughs> I tried to copy the, the uh, page title and it wouldn't let me. Um, I will just put this in here this way and do it that way. That, that works fine, too. Um, so, yeah, you might have your own Terminator crawling around sometime soon here. Yeah, well, I found this one. Speaking of RoboCop. Well, not RoboCop, a Terminator. Well, oh, yeah, the Terminator cop, the cop and Terminator. Um, well, the, the Terminator and Terminator. The liquid shape-shifting motherfucker, yeah. The, the, the Terminator and Terminator. <laughs> yeah, anyway, uh, here we go. You want robots? You got them. They're using them in the L.A. mall. And this, to me, this is a scary fucking thing. I mean, the wording here is, okay, 
A shopping center in Los Angeles has introduced its first robot security guard to patrol the mall and help identify potential potential shoplifters. Mm-hmm. The RoboCop style guard is capable of picking up video footage and sending information back to security headquarters so they can respond quickly. It's equipped with a 360 degree camera, Wi Fi, sensing units, and can stream live video, read license plates, and detect people. The bot operates autonomously and looks like a cross between a Dalek from Doctor Who and the main character in Wally. It says, okay, now this is what gets me. The objective of this machine is to differentiate between a harmless passerby and a possible, quote-unquote, possible criminal. Do you see the problems that this could cause, Grim? Certainly. I mean, come on. (laughs) Yep. A possible criminal, a potential shoplifter. Uh, Okay. Uh, I that I'm not liking this. Well, well, Gooberzilla right. wants to know. There's no shortage of te- technology, but where's the spaceships? Well, they, if, they have them. They just they don't want us to know about them. If you if you got this uh, this liquid metal that can form into various shapes, then right. certainly you don't it want could the general be, public having their hands on that. Cer- certainly, it could be made into a spaceship. Oh yeah, big time. <laughs> All right, all right. Let's hear some more music. It's Christmas. All right. Yeah. All right. <laughs> all righty. What kind of car do you drive? <laughs> Is it a rusty Chevrolet? No, it isn't. <laughs> <laughs> That's a classic, a Christmas classic here on the Freakers Ball. We we play it every year in in some form or another. Uh, anyway, before that, we had uh, Full Metal Health. Uh, yeah, that's right, scenes from uh, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer with Full Metal Jacket, uh, the, the famous uh, scene there. And uh, before that, we had Let Me Kill Mr. Dave Grohl and Billy F. Gibbon, Gibbons. Uh, doing a run Rudolph run we kicked it off with the Yopers Rusty Chevrolet yeah that's some that's some classic Christmas stuff right there let me tell ya <laughs> uh, yes it is oh boy <laughs> yes it is classic yeah and that whole whole fucking whole yeah song, yeah that's been from the first Christmas show we've done. Right, we've yeah, done. every year. I've seen in other ones, but I know that one for sure. Every year we, we, we play every it all Who <laughs> <laughs> you call him, Lim Tard? <laughs> oh. oh, the video. Okay. He posted a video, so I'm not going to watch it right now because I'm broadcasting. I'm on air, so. On wire, anyway. Yeah, on wire. <laughs> Oh, okay. Man. So yeah, um, it is that time of year. It is. It is. And I thought about putting decorations up, but I, you know, no one showed interest. No one seemed to care. <laughs> it's like that's fine with me. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, it's Ooh. like why go through all the trouble, digging all that stuff out just to put it back again. Right. Yeah. The dog is curious. To, oh, yeah, a dog with a bone? This dog, he's already doing his Jeff Russell growl and shit. He, the, the vet gave him a rawhide chew, and so we let him chew on it in the car on the way home. Yeah. And I put my hand, like, near his head, and he, like, freaked out on me, like, huh. I almost snapped it, almost bit my fucking hand. I'm like, whoa! Right. <laughs> it's like, dude, you know. Sure. And then tonight, today, oh, it dropped. And what happened when we got home is he dropped the the rawhide shoe like in between the seat, you know, mm-hmm. or whatever in the car. And so I said, okay, keep it down there, Zach, until you get him in the house, you know. Right. And then come back and get it and give it to him, you know. So right. that's what we did, but. 
because he was not having that, taking that thing away. It's like, uh oh, gotta nip this one in the bud here. Because even Marty did that, but Marty knew he never like snapped at us or bit us. You know what I mean? Right. So he he knew not to do that. But so this dog's gonna have to learn that. But he's still a really smart dog. He'll be fine. He's sure. a really good dog. So. Anyway, he's a pup. So what else you know. got? Christmas stuff. Well, let me see what else I got in my in my X Mass list. I might have. Something. Oh, I don't know if I have any X Mass stories. Yeah, I don't know if I have that either. Um, Saved. I do have this though. All right. Which is, you know, it's kind of it's cool. Oregon. This is from December 4th, 2018. I think we, we touched on this at a different figure's ball, but still a silent for the masses. Oregon is considering legalizing mushrooms. Nice. And we have talked to, in other states too, not just apparently Wyoming, I think. Anyway, um, I will link this. And we, we have done stories recently, though. This taking... It has been scientifically proven that mushrooms, psilocybin mushrooms, help with depression. Sure. So, this is a good thing, people. Absolutely. Good thing. So, I, I'm, all, I'm all for it. Um, it's a good thing. If it, if it cures depression, I mean... Think of all the lives that are lost and all the people that have to be on narcotics and these opioids and everything. And people right. are ODing on these things left and fucking right. You know? And they don't work. You gotta be addicted to narcotics being on these things. That's sure. not good, people. Like mushrooms, you could do those like once or twice a year. <laughs> you would, you'd be good. You yeah. know, do them once like around Christmas time and then do them again like in the summertime sometime. You'd be good to go. Yeah, no, it'd be great, yeah. You've done shrooms, right, Rim? Many a time. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they're fun. They are fun. Yeah, we used to go out picking them. Yeah, I mean, it's, they're fun. That's all I'm saying. I mean, yeah. and if it can, if it's going to, like, balance you and make, make you not be depressed, yay, yay, you know. Right. It's not something you do every day. Well, people, some people do believe it and do microdosing. They even do this with weed, too. They call it, like, microdosing. Right. Where you do a little bit at a time throughout the day. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Sure. Which you could do that with shrooms, but I don't know why you would. I mean, I I think you have to do the, the appropriate amount of them in order for them to work. Like, you can't do too little of them. You don't want to do too many, but you don't want to do, you want to do enough of them. You know what I mean? Shrooms are great. Ah, oh, they're, they're, oh, yeah, they're, they're awesome, man. Um, I, I, yeah, everybody, everybody likes them. They Even, taste like crap, but... Oh, yeah, but you take them, you put them in like a burrito or... Or you put uh, them in a milkshake or, or something. Peanut, peanut butter sandwich. Yeah, something like that. Whatever. And then you don't taste them. That's why I like mushroom chocolates, because you can't really taste the... Mushroom, the, the chocolate. You taste the chocolate on you taste the mushroom. <laughs> you know? I, I, I still, I still prefer. I mean, if I'm going to do a psychedelic, I, I prefer acid. But uh, yeah, yeah, it, it's got to be good. But if, if you get the right stuff, oh yeah. No, just you know, real, real regular LSD. Regular, you know? real, not 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 like the right, like the right stuff, like the, like the <laughs> actual real deal, you know. Or M M D A is fine. That's fun too. Yeah. Yeah. I never done NBA. Yeah. Anyway, uh, not directly related to the mushrooms, but uh, <laughs> all right. Sort of, kind of, maybe. Um, from Wired. dot com. A okay. new quantum paradox flags errors in our view of reality. <laughs> okay. It says. Uh, that quantum mechanics is a successful theory is not in dispute. It makes astonishingly accurate predictions about the nature of the world at microscopic scales. But what has been in dispute for nearly a century is just what it's telling us about what exists, what is real. There are a myriad interpretations that offer 
their own take on the question, each requiring us to buy into a certain as yet unverified claims, hence assumptions about the nature of reality. And the reason I say this ties in back in, and I'll get to more of this in a minute, is that when you do take mushrooms or acid or uh, opium or various other things, peyote, uh, whatever um, mind-expanding substance, you get to see reality in another way, uh, a more, I say, accurate way uh, that you can't see from being here within the, the normal world and all of the things you've learned throughout your life and uh, uh, the different perspectives that you've been given. This takes you out, out of this and lets you experience things that to a person that's never done such things, mm -hmm. they'll never understand. They'll never get it. Right, they won't. They, I mean, you, unless you, you do, you, you can, can have no concept of it. You, right? can, you can try and explain what it's yep. like to, to, to do acid to somebody all right. you want, but if they've never done it, they're never going to get it. Right, they, you they can't just, explain it. They just, they just have to experience it. Right. Yeah, anyway, going on, going on here. Now, a new thought experiment is confronting these assumptions head-on and shaking the foundations of quantum physics. The experiment is decidedly strange. For example, it requires making measurements that can erase any memory of an event that was just observed. Well, this isn't possible with humans. Actually, it is. Uh, quantum computers could be used to carry out this weird experiment and potentially discriminate between the different interpretations of quantum physics. Every now and then you get a paper which gets everybody thinking and discussing. And this is one of those cases, said Matthew Leifer, a uh, quantum physicist at Chapman uh, University in Orange, California. This is a thought experiment which is going to be added to the canon of weird things we think about on quantum foundations. It, and, and if you don't quite understand um, a lot of the thinking in, in quantum physics, quantum mechanics, you can understand that with, without really totally understanding it by uh, getting some of the more basic concepts of, of quantum physics. It's uh, it's an interesting thing, but through the use of uh, a psychedelic, you can get there much quicker. <laughs> of course, that's not what this article is talking about, uh, but I'm just trying to tie the things back together. <laughs> anyway, so the experiment designed by uh, Daniela Fragucker, I don't know how you say her name, and Renato Renner, of the Swiss Federal Institute of Technology, Zurich, involves a set of assumptions that, on the face of it, seem entirely reasonable, but the experiment leads to contradictions, suggesting that at least one of the assumptions is wrong. The choice of which assumption to give up has implications for our understanding of the quantum world and points to the possibility that quantum mechanics is not a universal theory, so cannot be applied to complex systems such as humans, which again, I don't totally agree with. But uh, that's okay. They're they're the ones doing the experiment. It's their experiment. Uh, quantum physics right. quanta, quantum physicists are notoriously divided when it comes to the correct interpretation from the equations, but that are used to describe quantum goings on. But in the new thought experiment, no view of the quantum world comes through unscathed. Each one falls afoul of what another one or another assumption. Could something entirely new await us in our search for the uncontroversial description of reality? <laughs> now, the article goes on, and, and it gets it gets a little um, complex uh, throughout here, um, but it's a very interesting read. And uh, okay, um, let, let's just do this little part here. Uh, the experiment has four agents: Alice, Alice's friend Bob, and Bob's friend, and Bob's friend. Alice's friend is inside a lab making measurements on a quantum system, and Alice is outside monitoring both the lab and her friend. 
Bob's friend is similarly inside another lab, and Bob is observing his friend in the lab, uh, treating them both as one system. Inside the lab, the first lab, Alice's friend makes a measurement on what is effectively a coin toss designed to come up heads one-third of the time and tails two-thirds of the time. If the toss comes up head, heads, Alice's friend prepares a particle with the spin pointing down. But if the toss comes up tails, she prepares the particle in the superposition of equal parts spin and up and down, up and up and spin down, spin up and spin down. <laughs> Uh, I don't know if this really translates to, 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 to speaking to people listening. I think I think you really just got to read it um, and and try and make sense of it. They got a little graphic here that kind of uh, points out how it works. Um, but what it comes down to is understanding reality on a different level, which through psychedelics you can do instantaneously. Um, without knowing exactly how it all works, you can understand how it all works. Does that make sense? I don't know if she's listening. All right. Anyway, I probably lost a lot of people on that. Anyway. <laughs> Sorry, I had to go help my child. All right. That's, that's all right. Like I said, I was, I was, I was probably losing a lot of people on, on that anyway. Um, you, you really got to read through this, and you should read through this. Um, it, it, it's it's a it's a terrific um, explanation of the thought experiment that they're doing of uh, this here for for the uh, a new understanding of reality. So um, uh, let me just suggest, strongly suggest that anybody listening, um, if this kind of thing interests you. Uh, re if reality interests you, <laughs> this would be something good for you to do. Uh, or just take right. some LSD. Or just take some LSD, and you'll get there. Right, yeah. Yeah. I mean, if you you know, you, you can laugh and joke around, but we're talking from experience. You wouldn't be like, oh, yeah, no, go do this. It's not good. You know, we wouldn't say that. Right, right. All right, we got to do our set here. Um, yep. <laughs> Let's do that. So, oops, oops, uh, in, enjoy. Okay. Blackberry, yeah. <laughs> That's the stoner train there with their version of uh, Black Betty to close out the show. Before that, we had the Trans-Siberian Orchestra doing Christmas Eve slash Sarajevo for Mr. Hans Dietrich. Uh, before that, we had For the Moose Girl, the NPR's uh, delicious dish from uh, the uh, Saturday Night Live skit, uh, Sweaty Balls. Uh, also from Moose Girl, Itchy Balls. She seems to be into the, <laughs> into the balls here tonight. Official parody of Gingle Bells. And we kicked it off for Miss Circle. Chris Rhea driving home for Christmas. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah. So, fun stuff. Yeah, good. Uh, another good Xmas show. Another year in the, yeah. uh, in the bag. Well, we'll have another. we got one more show for this year. Um, All right. But everybody, I want you all to have a uh, wonderful uh, Yuletide, whatever that, that you do. Uh, uh, right. If it's if it's Xmas on Tuesday, then good for that. Uh, that'll work for you too. Um, and wh whatever whatever it is, if you're going to celebrate something, celebrate right. it. Have a good time, party, as we yeah. as Woodman would say. Um, <laughs> but uh, tomorrow, don't forget, we got the dork table. At uh, noon Eastern with Mr. Flash, somebody, uh, and I'll be on Sunday morning playing probably some Christmas music, Christmas yeah. blues, uh, uh, maybe maybe some standard Christmas stuff, but probably try to go with the Christmas blues. I got a pretty good selection of that. Um, yeah. And then uh, that that'll be at noon Eastern to 3 p.m. Eastern, at which time Hal Anthony comes on behind out of the woodshed with his big old can of whoop ass. So check that out. I'll be got. Well, I may be on Monday. I haven't decided yet uh, for my okay. for my show, Grim Leftovers. 
All right. You know, uh, I don't really want to do the the typical news stuff on a Christmas Eve night. Right. Um, so I hear ya. If I, if I do if I do come on Monday night, which you'll have to stay tuned to find out at RLM Radio, um, mm -hmm. it'll be something different. Uh, if I could f figure something else that I want to do, then I'll do a show. Okay. If not, no. Uh, but Flash did say he will be on with In a Perfect World on Christmas Day, uh, which is Christmas night for him. So uh, okay. that, that's uh, uh, 1 p.m. Eastern on uh, Tuesday. Grammy okay. will not be here on Wednesday night. Um, okay. But she will be back on Friday night, and then we'll be back for the, awesome. for the, for the New Year's Eve slash prediction show. Uh, on yes. on Friday night. So get your predictions in if you got any. Right. And make them serious. None of that nonsense bullshit. <laughs> yeah. Not, yeah. It can, you can do those, but it's like, really? Yeah, they're just so <laughs> stupid. And it's hard. Uh, anyway, um, thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Uh, yep. uh, we, we love you all. We do. Peace. Peace.